In the 1960s, the Soviet Navy had a vision. They wanted to challenge the dominance of the United States Navy. Admiral Sergei Gorshkov, the head of the Soviet Navy, spearheaded this ambition. His answer was the Kiev-class aircraft carrier. These ships were unlike traditional carriers. They were designed to fulfill a dual role. The Kiev class would carry aircraft like other carriers, but they would also be heavily armed with missiles. This made them hybrid warships, capable of both attacking and defending. The Soviet Union had specific goals in mind for these ships. The Kiev class carriers were tasked with countering the US Navy's powerful carrier battle groups. These groups posed a significant threat to Soviet interests. The carriers were also intended to project Soviet power globally. The Soviet Union had allies around the world. The Kiev class would show these allies that the Soviet Union was a strong and reliable partner. The Kiev class carriers were built during a period of high tension between the Soviet Union and the West. Their armament reflected this reality. These ships were bristling with weapons. Their most formidable weapons were the SSN-12 Sandbox anti-ship missiles. These missiles could travel over 300 miles and deliver a devastating blow. They could be armed with conventional explosives or more ominously, nuclear warheads. Protecting the carriers from air attack was paramount. To counter this threat, they were equipped with an array of air defense systems. Long-range SAN-3 surface-to-air missiles provided a protective umbrella. For closer threats, the carriers relied on 9K-33 OSA missiles and rapid-firing AK-630 Gatling guns. These weapon systems ensured that the carriers were well defended against aircraft and incoming missiles. Despite their heavy armament, the Kiev-class carriers were still capable of fulfilling their primary role launching aircraft. They featured a large angled flight deck. This deck could accommodate up to 22 Yak-38 Forger fighters. The Forger was a unique aircraft. It was designed for vertical takeoff and landing. This meant it didn't need a long runway like traditional jets. This was a crucial advantage for the Soviet Navy. The carriers also carried helicopters. The K-25 Hormone was a common sight on their decks. This helicopter was a versatile asset. It could hunt submarines, provide targeting information for the ship's missiles, and conduct search and rescue missions. The combination of forger fighters and hormone helicopters gave the Kiev-class carriers a diverse and potent air wing. The fall of the Soviet Union in 1991 marked a dramatic change in the world order. It also spelled the beginning of the end for the Kiev-class carriers. The Soviet Union's successor state, the Russian Federation, faced economic hardship. Maintaining the aging carriers was simply too expensive. Furthermore, the shipyard that built and maintained the ships was now located in an independent Ukraine. As a result, the Russian Navy began to decommission the Kiev class. Some were sold off while others were scrapped. The Kiev, the lead ship of the class, was sold to China and turned into a tourist attraction. The Minsk met a similar fate. The Novorossiysk was scrapped in South Korea. Only one ship, the Baku, escaped this fate. It was sold to India and underwent an extensive modernization program. The Kiev-class carriers, while ultimately short-lived, left a lasting legacy. They were a testament to Soviet ambition and engineering prowess. They demonstrated the challenges of creating a hybrid warship. The Kiev-class tried to be both a missile cruiser and an aircraft carrier. This compromise in design ultimately limited their effectiveness in both roles. However, the story of the Kiev-class doesn't end there. The Baku, renamed INS Vikramaditya, continues to sail the seas as the flagship of the Indian Navy. This serves as a reminder of the enduring legacy of these unique warships. The Kiev class may be gone, but they are not forgotten. They remain an important chapter in the history of naval warfare.